Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm Devin Robinson. Uh, thanks for being here. I, I always start off by telling people I don't take anyone's um, presence for granted. Um, I'm always honored when people come out. I don't know if you came out to see me or see Donna or the Urban League or what, so I'm, I might be taking some credit for no reason. Um, I am, I could start in so many places, um, but I, I, I really am a big advocate for entrepreneurship, okay? Um, I talk about entrepreneurship, I teach entrepreneurship, teach business classes, travel the country, doing what I do now in so many different capacities from big stages in keynote addresses to um, smaller stages in classrooms or training and the whole night. And really what I do and what I talk about is strategies and, and, and critical thinking aspects that have worked significantly for me and my own success, okay? So I, I don't believe in, um, I don't want to get too far into what I'm, the, the presentation, but I don't believe in uh, talking or trying to uh, just be theoretical in what you're doing if you have no experience in it, okay? So you need to leave the experience to the expert. So uh, I'm pretty much coming from that vantage point. So this morning, I'm going to be talking about your rules for business success, okay? And before I even get there, um, there's some things that I have to really lay out as far as the foundation in understanding what business is, uh, the right behaviors in business. I mean, I'm sure you've probably seen tons of programs, went to tons of conferences, uh, read tons of books and the whole nine, um, but th there's always a real missing component a lot of times with people when they're trying to tra transition successfully, okay? And just to give you a little bit about my background, I worked in government, I worked in corporate, and I've been trailblazing entrepreneurship for over 10 years, okay, on a full-time basis. Now, there are different levels to entrepreneurship, as you really, I'm sure you know. You can be doing stuff on a part-time basis. You can be doing, going from hustle to hustle. I'm sure you know those types of people that one month they're doing something, and the next month they're into something else. No real consistency, but they always stay with a safety net called a job, okay? And to really go from there into entrepreneurship requires a whole renewing of the mind, a whole uh, understanding of the entire process and what comes with that, okay? So I wrote three words up here that really breaks down where I'm coming from with this, okay? The mechanical, the technical, and the psychological aspects of business. And in order to, to be successful in business as a whole, you got to be able to master all three, okay? You got to be able to master all three. So what, what are the components? The mechanical is really, uh, it's, it's a universal aspect in businesses, okay? So the, so the mechanical piece would be uh, uh, paying your taxes, you know, managing your books, uh, recruiting, you know, many of the similar elements that are in all businesses, right? That's the mechanical aspect. So everyone has these types of things. They're managing payroll, they're managing expenses, utilities, whatever the case is. And then you have the technical aspect. So what would be the technical aspect of, of running a business? The technical aspect would be exactly what the business does. So you, you have to be keen, let me go back in the first one, you gotta be keen in managing the business itself as a business, and then you gotta be keen in de 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 delivering quality products or service. So the technical side is what that business does. So whatever industry you're in, whatever you say you're great at, that is the technical side. So uh, this is what it does or what it is, and that's that. And then we got the psychological aspect, which is perhaps the most difficult aspect for many people. You know why? Because in entrepreneurship or in business, in the business world, as an employee, you can master this. So you can be getting proficient in these two all along before you're even an entrepreneur. But then when it's time to become an entrepreneur, whatever you learn on that job or whatever you learn in a corporate environment is not the same. So a lot of people, a lot of times in conferences and training, they tell you so much of, well, these are the books, your cash flow, this is this, this is how you market, this is how you advertise, a lot of the things that are not that diff difficult to digest. And then you're sharpening your technical expertise. So you're going to training, you're doing continuing ed, you're getting all that, you're getting all this stuff in the workforce period. Just as workforce professionals, you're developing these 
first two skills, but then when it comes to here, so many books, so many trainers, so many conferences leave this component out. Now you may get some of it hit and miss at success conferences that are just giving you motivation and empowerment, but how do you really make the psychological aspect apply to entrepreneurship? And we're gonna talk so much about that today. Now I can talk about business and entrepreneurship for 10 years straight without taking a break, okay? So I'm gonna try to sum up and package and stay contained in, in the areas that are uh, necessary for what I'm speaking about in the psychological aspect of entrepreneurship. Ironically, that was just an introduction to what I'm gonna be talking about today. I haven't even really got into really what I wanna say. So I just wanted to lay that out for you to understand how we're gonna approach this thing called business, entrepreneurship, and be successful at it, okay? Because it's one thing you gotta understand. Everybody can own something, but not everyone can lead something. Not everyone can be entrepreneurs, but everyone can be owners. So being a business owner and being an entrepreneur, those are two different things. Two distinctly different things. Okay, you can own the system, but you have no idea how to go out, see opportunities, create opportunities, take raw goods into a finished product, lead people the whole nine, but you know how to own something. And in many cases, a lot of people go towards uh, like franchising and things like that because it's a model that's already designed, okay? So before I even get started, I really wanted to begin what I was about to say with a phrase that really gets people to thinking, okay? A defeated man is a danger to a woman. A defeated woman is a danger to her children. And defeated children are a danger to society. Let's follow that trail. Now, why am I even talking about this? Because entrepreneurs are the top of the food chain. You believe it or not. Entrepreneurs are the ones that set the quality of life in any society. When you see crime, dysfunction, illiteracy, lack of education, lack of services, is because there's an absence of entrepreneurs, of good entrepreneurs. So why is there an absence of good entrepreneurs? Why are there a, a high level of trapped entrepreneurs, is what I call them. Trapped entrepreneurs are those that are working on jobs but have that desire for entrepreneurship. But they just don't know how to transition. They don't know how to get off the plantation. So they're trapped. And a lot of times, they die trapped. It's simply because they don't know how to go from here to there, okay? And in many cases, tons of cases, the reason why they don't know how is because of that fear, that fear of failure, that defeated mindset. So if you have a bunch of people that desire entrepreneurship, but they don't step out there, they don't do it properly, uh, I mean, properly is really the word that sums it up, when, it, when you talk about integrity, uh, not over-promising and under-delivering the whole nine, you have a problem in the community itself, okay? Now, so many areas I can go with that, but I'm gonna rein myself in, because like I said, I, I barely haven't, haven't even started yet. But that becomes the problem. And when I say going from here to there, what I'm saying is going from where you are to where you wanna be. Now, everyone in here is interested in entrepreneurship, am I correct? But do you have a clear blueprint or roadmap on where you're trying to go? And are you, are you, are you, do you think you'll be successful at navigating to that place? That's the thing. Many times we know where we want to go. Many times we know what's required, but we don't go. And it's simply because we're more loyal to what we know rather than being loyal to where we want to go. Now, when I say being loyal to what you know, I'm talking about family, friends, habits, luxuries, the whole nine. These things are what we know. The 
biggest problem for entrepreneurs or people isn't learning. It's unlearning. It's unlearning. So when we think about learning, when we, talk, when we think about where we want to go, let's think about this for a second. Many times in life, who get to us first stays with us last because we're able to unlearn. So everything we learn as a child, whatever the case, whoever got to teaching us, this is how you manage money. This is how you deal with people. This is what your integrity should be. Whoever gets to us first, that usually stays with us until we die because we have a more difficult time unlearning what was taught to us. So what you have to do is get to a space and say, wait a second. Whoever got to me first, where did they end up last? So you got to start thinking, everything that I learned, this is, this is a real process. Am I getting too deep for y'all? Am I? Because I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to step on toes here, right? We really got to understand, I, I had to go through this process. I came from a, a family of entrepreneurs that stopped at my grandparents. And I'm sure many of us have grandparents that did that. But then as the industrial age kicked in and manufacturing kicked in, our parents got lazy, they got comfortable, they went, got on jobs and retired and forgot to continue that heritage, heritage of entrepreneurship in the children, right? So I grew up with parents, aunts, uncles that worked on jobs. So I was taught something that I had to unlearn if I wanted to get this entrepreneurship seed that was inside of me out to the masses. Because many of you have ideas, visions, goals, and sometimes your ideas that you have are still on the surface. You haven't even really tapped into where you really, really can go with your vision for your business. You're still kind of on the surface because you still haven't unlearned certain things. You're still kind of in the mode of, well, this is my vision, but the only thing that can contribute to that vision is everything I've learned since I was growing up. So imagine if you can say, I need to unlearn things that were taught to me by someone who didn't go as far as they can go in life so that I can go much further. Now, I'm going to kind of sidebar a little bit. Like I said, I haven't even gotten into the, to the PowerPoint yet. Can you believe that? <laughs> Y'all just making me talk because you're just watching and not stopping me, right? You just let me go. Let's think about this for a second. What if I could convince each one of you in this room that humans can fly? What would you say? He's laughing. He's laughing at the idea. Why would you laugh? Fly. What if I, if I got up right now and levitate and flew across this room? What would you say? Everyone's laughing. Why is everyone laughing? Is that a problem? Why, why do we have this belief that we can't fly? We don't what? You don't think we do what? You don't think we can fly? Yeah. You think we can fly? Yeah. Okay, I got one already. We got one already. Anybody else? You think we can fly? Absolutely. Why do you think we can fly? I watch sci-fi. <laughs> <laughs> it's a vulgar mind, though. It's all as far as so sci-fi got you believing that. Now, some people are looking at you like you're crazy. <laughs> see, see that guy? He's leaning into the wall so hard. He's like, whatever she got, I don't want it to rub off on me. <laughs> I mean, let's think about this for a second. Evolution of time. Well, I wouldn't say the evolution of time is the. Okay, okay, but I don't even think I don't even say in a future context. I'm thinking right now, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 500 years ago. We can fly. Why do we think we can't fly? Let's, let's think about this for a second. So, hmm? Our influence is at this point just programmed our minds that we can't fly. So. Everything you've learned. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Everything you've learned. So, this is what I'm trying to get you to understand with your vision and your beliefs. Okay, so I'm going to frame this, I, this whole idea of flying so you just don't think this guy's crazy and you start grabbing your stuff and trying to run out of the room, right? He's trying to get us to join a cult or something. That's, so let me just frame it so you can understand what I mean. Think about how long you think you, it took humans to realize we could swim. We don't swim like any other fish in the sea. 
So what if humans were trying to mimic the movement of fishes of the ocean? And we realized we had our own unique way of swimming. Nothing similar to any other fish of the sea. So right now, we decided to build airplanes and hang gliders and all this stuff that mimics the motion of birds. What if we have our own way of flying? Jet streams out of our noses, out of our ears. It sounds crazy now, but when they find this footage 500 years from now, when we are able to swim, they'll be like, man, that guy was onto something. Let's think about this. If we understand we can only use 10% of our brains, that's, we're well not only can, that's all we use right now, 10% of our brains. We all know that, right? Imagine what is possible in that 11th percent. So what happens is we get to a very progressive and innovative stage. We create things, luxuries for individuals to benefit from, and then the masses get even more content. And then we get further away from our 11 percent because we get content. We don't push ourselves. So how many of you can go outside right now and start fire? Really? Everyone in this room knows how to start a fire. No. Why? You click the uh, heat on in the car and you're good. Right? How many of us know how to kill an animal, skin it, cook it? Like, of course not. Because we've made advancements. The entrepreneurs make the advancement, but then it makes a, a stagnation for the masses of people who decide to be content and comfortable in what was created. So what I'm saying here in this room is, you are possibly the ones that can push us to the 11th percent. And at the end of the day, no one can tell us if we're only using 10 percent of our brains. No one can tell us conclusively that humans can't fly. It's impossible. You can't say that. If we can dominate the Earth and we can swim in the ocean, why is it that we don't believe we can fly through the air? All right, thanks for coming. <laughs> That's it, and I'll see you all when I see you all. No one's moving. OK, so I got to keep going. All right. So do you understand where I'm going with this whole entrepreneurship thing and believing how far we can go? OK? Now, I also mentioned going from here to there. It, it's, it, it's, it's really a, a simple, rational concept in where you're trying to go. But our emotions deter us and derail us into not going the right place. Now, if you were to walk out this room right now, m most of the ladies, I don't know how the guys will feel. They may be happy about this. But if the ladies walk out of this room right now, a van pulled up, grabbed you, and kidnapped you, and took you somewhere you didn't want to go, what are you going to do? Are you going to be kicking and screaming? Some of the guys will be like, hey, let's go. Where are we going? I don't know, guys in the room, right? But the women may have a problem with that, or will have a problem with that, with someone snatching you up, throwing you in a van, and perhaps taking you somewhere that you didn't want to go. Now, would your attitude change if they dropped you off exactly where you were trying to go? Everyone's watching me like I'm crazy. That disruption will be temporary, or that, that emotional reaction will be temporary until you realize, oh man, this person was taking me where I wanted to go. It's like the Mr. Miyagi syndrome, right? Wax on, wax off, you're mad because you're whack. I'm washing these cars all day. Then you get in the battery, you're like, oh, okay. You took me where I wanted to go. You have an idea in your mind, and you know exactly where you want to go. So many times we get stuck or crippled with moral or familial ab obligations. Because I'll tell you right now, we got haters in the family. We got haters amongst friends. We got haters in the churches. We got a lot of people that not all time with ill intentions, but don't want you to go where you're trying to go. Sometimes their own failures are projected upon you. Well, you shouldn't do that because, you know, X, Y, Z, right? Because of their own internal failures, right? Remind me of the joke of that lady who wanted to go back to college when she was 60 years old. Her friend said, go back to college now? You should have done that when you were 20. 
Why are you going now? You know when you get your degree, you're going to be 64 years old? And the lady said, well, how old will I be in four years if I don't get the degree? Her friend was projecting, whether ill-intended or not, but a deterrence from where she wanted to go. Now, all this that I'm saying, as you can see, has nothing to do with mechanical or technical. We're speaking about psychological and your commitment to where you're trying to go. Because I always tell people, your money follows where your mind is most, period. Your money follows where your mind is most. So sometimes you're really battling with yourself. I know I want to go to Canada, but I'm going to get on a plane to Miami. Does that really make sense? If you get in the airport and you sit on the plane and it says, thank you for boarding flight 1038 to Miami, and you're supposed to be going to Canada, you're going to jump up and get off that plane, will you? Or are you going to just ride out to Miami? Now, let's think about it. The plane, all your friends are on the plane, you, you, you went to high school with, all your church members, all your drinking buddies, whatever you do. I don't know what you do. All your buddies on 1038 going to Miami, are you still going to stay on that flight to Miami? Even though you know you're trying to go to Canada. This is probably one of the most difficult parts of transitioning into a flourishing entrepreneur. entrepreneur. One of the main things you got to master is being by yourself. Being a lone wolf by yourself. Because success in your own right is a very lonely thing. Especially, and I'm speaking from the context of growing up in a certain way, especially if you've been conditioned in a family of growing up in a certain way. When you're starting to transition and you're trying to do something, there's going to be some pushback, and you got to be a leader in your own destiny to say, i got to keep going here. No matter what obstacles or challenges arise, i got to keep going there. you got to be more loyal to where you want to go instead of being loyal to what you know. That's really the basis of entrepreneurship, and it's so crazy because that is the most battle of ourself that is the most difficult part for people to succeed in entrepreneurship. So we talk about, uh, well, I'm not going to talk about too much in this class, but we talk about money management, the consumption theory. No one in the room knows, understands the consumption theory, I'm sure, except Donna, right? OK, so understand the consumption theory, right? That comes with uh, understanding and having discipline within yourself to do certain things, OK? Real simple. As an employee, all the money that's deposited into a bank account is for the taking. It's for our disposal, right? But as a business owner, all that money that comes into the account is not yours. And in order to really get to the next level as an entrepreneur, not just you have to be able to manage that money properly, you got to keep the money coming in in large volumes. So how do we do that? There are, there are techniques that I'm going to talk about as well to make sure that your volume is right, but you have to really be able to manage yourself because those habits, your personal habits, follow you into your professional activities, period. Now, if you notice, I'm saying a lot about psychological. Does this make sense at all? Why? I could care less who's in the room. I can care less about the talents that you have, the skills that you have, uh, you know, the resources that you have, if you have good credit. All that stuff is irrelevant when it comes to Devin Robinson. Because so many times we put ourselves in worse situations just because of our psyche is not adjusted properly to business. Okay? So, Last tip before I kind of I get started and go into it, okay? So when we speak about a consumption theory, just to kind of give you an idea of what this means as being an uh, entrepreneur, right? When I was growing up, I don't know, maybe some of you share this with, with your grandparents. Uh, I had a grandmother, and my parents used to tell me to eat everything that's on my plate, right? And they would say, you got starving children in Indonesia or the Philippines. You better eat everything that's on this plate. Am I alone? 
We all had that same thing. So we grow up consuming everything that was on our plate. And we take that into many other areas of our lives. Let's think about financial consumption. Now, the money that comes to our account, we consume everything that's on our plate, psychologically without even understanding, subconsciously that that's what we're doing. What happens is, just like consuming food, we don't eat until we're no longer hungry. We eat until we're full. We're hungry, we go eat, we start eating. At some point, you're, you, you stop being hungry. But you keep eating. Right? You keep eating because the goal is to clean this plate. Or to get so full that I can't clean this plate. Finance is the same way. We spend our monies until we're broke instead of spending until we no longer need. You know, we, we kind of dancing with needs and wants here, right? What's really a need? What's really a want? We spend and take care of ourselves in those categories, but sometimes we make wants become needs. It shifts over, and then everything that comes in our bank account, we're taking that, we say, I need that. And really, you don't need it. You want it. What do we really, really need? It takes a real strong visionary of your idea to understand when it's time to relax, when it's time to fall back and say, okay, I reach exactly where I want to go. We're familiar with Mark Zuckerberg, right? He was offered on two occasions money for Facebook. You guys know the story of that. Twice. Microsoft and Yahoo attempted to buy the company from him in the late 2000s. For uh, one time was for five million. He's still growing, you know, still in, in his home with his friends. And then another time, I think it was fifty million, something like that. He would not sell. Now he's worth what? A hundred billion. Now well, the company's worth a hundred billion. Because he understood when it was time to fall back and say, Ah, now I've reached my vision. So many of us we cash out so quick. We give him, oh, that's a lot of money. We cash out, okay? And we got to start making money a small thing. $50,000 should mean nothing to you. Nothing. Because think about this. The more you make money nothing to you, the, more, the less it burns your pocket. It only burns your pocket because it's a big thing to you. OK, we can't help ourselves. Huge stories, secrets, we, it burns because it's such a big thing to us, right? But you got to make, if I was to write a check right now for $50,000, what will you do with it? How? What will you do? Tell me. Give me line item. Give me line item. You, that's very ambiguous. Invest in my business, grow my business. I need line item. OK, give me budgets. Inventory, how much? About? Are you sure? And marketing is how much? <laughs> marketing, I'm at about 5,500. Where are we marketing at? Marketing is a local market. So I'm getting a rise and I'm working on the website. Why? Because you got to keep in your game. Yeah, but are you, are you telling the right people? That's the only people that you can target marketing. But how do you know those are the people you should be, you should be marketing to? Because I've done my studies and my statistics on those people to make sure those are the type of people that want And what makes them the people? What were the results of your study? Which people? Who, who are these people? Nine times out of ten, it's a woman in her thirties who um, is middle income, African American, uh, working class woman making anywhere between thirty to seventy-five thousand. That does what? What's your business? Makeup and cosmetics. Makeup and cosmetics. So you drilled it down to middle-aged woman in her thirties, African American, the whole nine that use cosmetics, <laughs> and that's it. But you're sure that those are the people that's going to use your makeup? No, that's 78% of the people who use my makeup. You can't reach all the people all the time. So you want to really focus on the people who are going to bring in the largest percentage of income. I know you're struggling right now. We're, 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 I can see it in your face. He's like, why did he pick me? <laughs> why am I sitting here? I could have sat in the back. I could have been at home. Oh, why did I go here to get in the hot seat? Everyone's going to feel the hot seat one time or the other. Why are you avoiding eye contact? Every time I look at you, you look no. that way. <laughs> right? Yeah, she's hot already. Look at her. 
I'm in a three-piece suit. I'm not as hot as her. She's like, oh, my gosh, what are we talking about? Why is I'm, I'm trying to get us to really expand our thinking. $50,000 you should want every day, right? And it should be nothing to you. But the reason why we can't get to 50000 is because we can't keep our hands on 1000 So 50000 eventually becomes a far prayer because we never get comfortable with 1000 or 10000 or 20000 and start saying, man, 50000 is nothing. I should get that every day. And me getting that every day would require XYZ marketing, would require XYZ type of people. That's a whole other thing I'm going to talk about is stages of employees so you can really understand who you should be hiring. There's six level stages of employees, okay, that I've I'll outlined, and I'll, I'll get to that, hopefully. Okay, but you got to know all this stuff if you're planning to say, I should be making $50,000 a day. And sometimes we sit back and say, that's a lot of money. Well, if your vision comes from you and from your DNA and it's your mission, no one else has does it, why do you think that's a lot of money? Why do you think that can't be? So in many cases, we're looking for monies that we are not prepared to properly allocate once we get it. I said 50,000, some of you start drilling in your head because you're not really that sure what you would do with it. So you're just kind of here, and you're just, you're just going wherever the ship takes you. The ship has no engine, has no rudder. You're just sailing in the ocean. And whatever wave picks you up, you're gone. So we're opportunity seeking rather than ability seeking. All right, so let's get into the, what we're here to talk about. After I don't ram my mouth for about 45 minutes. Can you believe that? Y'all already sat through that? I wouldn't have sit through that. Your rules for business success. Now, here's the thing. I'm very black and white, okay? If I know what it takes for me to go from here to Canada, you can't tell me to get on a flight or a train or a car or whatever else to go somewhere else. I'm going to Canada. What are you talking about, right? You're driving your car, someone's hitchhiking, and they say, hey, can you take me to Columbus? And you're like, what? I'm going to Cleveland. Come on, man, I just want... You're not going to give them a ride. Well, for other reasons, you may not give them a ride, but you won't let distractors come along and try to take you somewhere else, okay? So your, your rules for business success, no one gets to choose your life but you. No one gets to choose your life but you. So you have to understand the importance of taking control of your vision, okay? A vision was invested in you, was planted in you, and you have to take control of going where uh, you need to go with that. You should never depend on the actions of others to take action for yourself. Never. 